Hi, I'm Fazal from Edible Roots. We help people in Delhi grow their own food in small confined urban spaces like balconies, terraces or gardens. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a bamboo planter using bamboo trays, a weed cloth and of course your soil mix. So the first step is the tray. Karan's going to show us how to put trays on your terrace to ensure that water doesn't seep into your house um, and give it space underneath to run off. The key part of putting a tray is to see that the keys lock into their sockets to make sure the trays don't move. The dimensions of these trays are about two feet by one and a half feet. And so we're gonna put six trays here. It'll give us a little more space. This is the bamboo skirting. This is what gives the support to soil from the sides and holds the soil together. We use a thin metal wire to attach the bamboo planks to each other. Once you've tied all four planks to each other on the, in the corners, this is what your box should look like. And then you place the box, the skirting on the trays to make sure that your soil doesn't come in direct contact with the terrace. So the third step of this process is the weed cloth. The weed cloth's role is to hold the soil mix in place and make sure it doesn't run off when you water your plants. This is a polymer which withstands water as well as sunlight. Now the fourth step of making your bamboo planter is the potting mix or the soil mix. So the potting mix is a crucial part of your rooftop planter. The mix we use is a combination of coco peat, vermicompost, gobar khad and vermiculite. It's to provide the right breathable, airy, porous texture for plant roots to easily spread and find a comfortable home. So there are two main problems when you're growing in containers on the rooftop. The first problem is that the soil becomes hard and compacted because there aren't any worms or subsoil fauna to keep it loosened up. The second problem is that roots have a very limited space to look, search for nutrients. So to compensate for these two problems, we create a potting mix, which is a combination of a number of different elements. The first and most important one is vermicompost, which provides nutrients. The second is coco peat. It ensures that the pot potting mix remains friable or crumbly. It gives roots space to easily spread and move around. It makes sure the soil doesn't get compacted. The third component is vermiculite, which is a mineral, it's a crushed rock that's then popped and creates spaces that hold moisture and nutrients for roots. So those are the three main components of our potting mix. We also add bits of neem khali as a fungicide and pesticide, and um, a very little amount of seaweed for micronutrients. We use this uh, small tokeries, uh, bamboo baskets, to grow something called microgreens and shoots. Uh, microgreens are basically the stage of a plant after the sprout. So we are very used to eating of sprouts like mung sprouts and bean sprouts that we eat at home. But uh, the stage after that, which is the first stem and the first two leaves. So that's what's called a microgreen. That stage of the plant is the stage when it has the maximum diversity of minerals. Uh, available uh, to it and the enzymes are also very rich and available at this time because the life force is just awakening at that time in the seed. So uh, what microgreens are basically is growing that and harvesting it at about the seventh day. So the first stem has come out and the two leaves have come out and you pull the whole thing out 
and uh, and you use that in salads or anything where you eat raw you don't have to cook them so in a to in a tokri like this you would just sort of uh, make the soil a bit rough and uh, the seeds that you would use for growing microgreens are something that's fast growing so usually they are the seeds of the greens family like you know alfa alfa or methi sarso you can also plant some of the radishes also a lot of the cabbage cauliflower bok choy all of these seeds that look like a rye are usually very fast germinating so we use these seeds to as microgreens so i've taken some seeds of uh, sarso with me over here made the soil rough you plant it very densely because this this one <coughs> you want want it to grow very densely so we plant the seeds very very densely in this and what you will see after about 7 days is the first stem and about two leaves and then you just pull the whole thing out along with the root even the root is supposed to be eaten you just lightly rinse it to wash off any soil that might be attached to it and then you just put it in a salad or a soup so once the seeds have been put you just take another some amount of potting soil and you just cover the seeds lightly and then you will water it with a watering can You can keep this in partial sun or about where you get about 3 to 4 hours of sun or maybe even lesser than that and just water it very lightly to keep the soil moist in about 7 days you will start seeing the sprouts out and you can harvest them and keep once you harvest it again you replant it and you can keep growing in this tokris for a very long time so we use this tokris as well uh, just just like this box is one option you can use this tokris or those acp sheets over there so in about a tokri of this size you would plant about let's say 5 to 6 saplings and they'll grow to a decent enough size you make a slight depression in the soil and then you plant each sapling at about an equal equal distance okay so once we have planted the saplings uh, they need to be immediately watered lightly with a shower head like that and uh, so that the roots of the plants can get settled they are very uh, vulnerable right at the transplanting stage you want to water just enough not too much so that the water drains but also not so little that the soil gets dry it has to stay lightly moist at at all times so depending on the season it might be once a day or once every other day and depending on how much sunlight your space gets it might be even sometimes twice a day so you have to see the season see the weather but the idea is that the water shouldn't drain from the bottom but the soil surface should look slightly moist so we are here at this uh, terrace garden in zorbag that that we had set up about uh, one and a half months ago about 2 months actually and uh, the plants that we are growing here are mostly the winter ones that we had planted about 2 uh, months ago again uh, you can see french beans celery uh, some herbs thyme sage parsley uh, of course all the greens the palak bathua dhania the deeper boxes are for uh, uh, vegetables that need a deeper root zone We also have some small pink radishes, cabbage, cauliflower, beetroot over here. So this is the variety of things that has been grown. Over the last two months, once the setup has been done, uh, the main things that go into the maintenance of it is uh, is basically watering it appropriately, which in the winter is about once a day, maybe sometimes every other day. The next thing is basically you know sort of keeping to, uh, some sort of organic sprays. You know, so we have uh, some neem uh, spray that we use. that needs to be sprayed on a frequent basis like about once a week so that is also done uh, besides the watering and some fertilizing like you know a seaweed powder or a humic acid these are all organic uh, nutrients that can be provided to the plants and that's done about on a week or 10 days basis so that the 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 plants stay healthy basically what happens is when we grow in boxes or in any urban space in a confined space the roots of the plants are confined so they can't go wherever they want to get the nutrients so the main thing is to feed the plants uh, more frequently than you normally would on a land and just water it correctly um going forward now as you can see some of the plants are starting to bolt as you can see the yellow flowers in there that means that the heat is increasing and it's going into summer that's basically going to seed so that's a sign that the temperatures are rising uh, going forward in the summers over here it's going to get extremely hot so we are going to cover this whole space with a white shade net for the veggies we typically use a 35% shade net in a white color so that uh, the li white light diffuses it appropriately for veggies plus the 35% shade net blocks 35% of the light and allows uh, the 65% to flow through which is what the veggies need <laughs>